Welcome to Real Film Snobs. I'm Brian Michael. That makes me Angela Yeager. We have a terrific episode for you this week. We mm -hmm. have a critically acclaimed foreign film, a gangster epic, a whodunit, a Betty Davis movie, and a film from the golden age of Japanese cinema. So you saw a clip at the top of the show for Parasite. And this is about a lower income family struggling to make ends meet that end up ingratiating themselves into the lives of a wealthy family. And this is from uh, South Korean filmmaker Bong Joon-ho, who is a long time, yeah, we're long time fans of his on Real Film Snobs. I think yes. we've seen just about all of his films except for maybe one, I think is what we figured yep. out, that there's one we've missed in his career. So we've been a fan of his for a long time. We're super excited about this. And the question that remains about this film, is the buzz real? Because leading up to this, it was like the critical acclaim over this film was like basically Insane. like the second coming yep. of film auteurs yep. had happened. Something major, yes. you know. So the, the good news is, is that this is a really great film. The bad news is, if there is any bad news, I'm not sure if there is, but I would say for people that have seen a lot of his films before, it seemed less surprising to me, I guess, in a way, because he, some of these areas he's explored before in other films like Snowpiercer and even Oakjaw to a certain degree, um, certainly in The Host. So I felt like I, I, I knew his formula a little bit. That said, it's a terrific movie. Yeah, you know, it's, it is a little bit like The Host, just without the monster. And if you haven't seen The Host, not the young adult one. Come on, really? I mean, do you think that's one we would be talking about? No, it's the monster movie that he made that I absolutely love. It made my top 10 list. Then, of course, there's Mother, which made my top 10 list. And then there's Parasite, which would probably be making my top 10 list as well. Snowpiercer, which made my top 10 oh, top list. 10, that made my top 10 list yeah. as well. See, all of his have been, I've been right there with it since day one. Anyway, uh, yeah, this is an absolutely fantastic film. I've seen it twice now in the theater. Um, I just can't get over how stunning the look of this house is that isn't real. It's in a studio. It's special effects. Um, that's just absolutely astounding and amazing and plays an integral part of the, uh, of the movie as well. The use of stairs in this film to show the descending and ascending and just in terms of culture clashes is in absolutely incredible. I mean, it, it's something a lot of filmmakers do, but the way he does this one, at one point in time when they go from the rich people's houses back to theirs during the rainstorm, it is ridiculous the amount of stairs. They, they constantly having to go over, constantly going down and going down and going Which down. Which is also, of course, a metaphor for the film. Of course. you're yeah. going up and down. Yeah. And the the family, um, the, the lead of the family um, is the actor Song Kang Ho, and I apologize if I'm butchering his name. He's been in a bunch of the films by Bong yep. Joon Ho, uh, including uh, Snowpiercer and The Host and Memories of Murder. He does a great job of being able to handle being a goofy great and or silly and being very serious in a dramatic role. There's some times where he actually does hit his head a few times here, but it's a very serious role. Um, he's absolutely fantastic. I mean, the first half of this film is incredibly funny. It is so funny, even though at times I'm wondering... So is the family really a bunch of con artists? Because there's some things they do like con artists, but then again, they're also just struggling to get by because mm -hmm. you know they're poor, so maybe that's just part of it as well. Right. And then sometimes I kind of feel bad for the, the rich family because they're kind of being taken advantage of. They don't realize how they're being taken advantage of, so I feel kind of bad for them. But then right. you, maybe you don't because they're rich and they're, they're ridiculously rich. And so there's a lot of mixed well, feelings. Well, there's good and bad in both. And that's yes. one of the things I think is work makes the film work is that nobody is just a caricature. I mean, at first yeah. I was a little worried about that because you see, the, the rich mom with her dog, her little foofy dog and yeah. everything. But, you know, there there are some nice aspects to the rich family. There's yeah. also some really horrendous aspects to them. And Correct. the same thing with the other family. And they're both, I mean, it's basically this whole metaphor for these structural issues, these, these structural inequalities of their income, but also um, this idea that is perpetuated, this myth that you can just make something of yourself, that you can meritocracy, if you will, if you can just, yeah. if you just work hard enough, and the, he really nails that at the end of the film, he oh, really yeah. nails that home. This idea, this myth, which is very much an American thing, 
And I think it's very interesting that several of the characters adopt American names to ingratiate themselves. Um, the young man who's the first one to get hired by the rich family, he goes by Kevin. Then his sister comes on board, she goes by Jessica. And the, it's very well, interesting. Well, there's also some Native American um, uh, with the kid, with the young boy that buys toys and that, that plays off the, arrows, the big yeah. time, very much at the end where you're like, oh, Native American going after, eh, I could totally see that, <laughs> you know? Yeah. And so, he, I mean, he it doesn't hit you over the head with the symbolism. And if you're, if you're going in there just to, to watch a, a very, a very funny film with a very sharp um, uh, turn, left or, or right, whichever you want to look at it, because um, the second half, as they say in the previews, the second half of the film is very different, or it takes a big turn. First half's more and of a comedy, really second half it. is a yeah. lot less so. Yeah. And, but the tension in this film also that's built up is, is yeah. absolutely incredible. I mean, there are so many ways, with his films, you know, he is, aside from just being a foreign language film, I mean, Akja obviously was was on Netflix, but if he, he could easily, he had, with Snowpiercer, it was very much a big crowd I know a lot of people that have watched it, and a lot of them, you know, unless there was some violence in it, really enjoyed it. He really has his finger like a pull on, on the pulse of what people want to see, and I and, and still be able to do it in his way, and still be able to do it in a very artistic way. I mean, mm -hmm. he's very much a Spielberg in, in, in those aspects, which is high praise for me. Um, and I love that about him because you can easily sit there and watch. Yeah, it's a monster movie, you know, called The Host. But then he also makes a movie called Parasite, which I, I love that. Um, but then oh, you yeah, can also yeah. see it in, in the depths of, of what the films of what he's trying to the statements he's trying to make. Um, this is an incredibly beautiful looking film uh, just amazing. absolutely fantastic Art direction music the performances nails are incredible the you know i really noticed the second time with the score it does a good job of helping you out a few times because it is a foreign language film and because they do some sharp turns whether or not it's funny or whether or not we should be because at one point in time someone loses their job and it's kind of funny but then you, you see the person kind of walking away and the music kind of gives you a little bit of a cue of them you feel kind of bad for this person. And so it does a really nice job of that. And there's a little undertones here and there that builds the tension that slowly build up to where we have the something happen at the end, which ugh, I would love to talk about, but we're not going to do that here. Also, Sodam uh, Park, uh, who plays the daughter and the tutor, Great. she is fantastic. Jessica, yeah. She yes, because when she goes in, no, no. It's all I do that my tutoring alone. No, no, you can't come in here. No, no. It's, yes. And then she just riffs on some total she's BS. She's extremely oh, smart, God, which so I also good. love about it. It yeah. also shows that none of these people are there in their positions of income inequality because one is less smart than the other. Yeah. You see that right away, that this other family is just as smart. I mean, oh, they have yeah. just as much. They're sharp-witted. It's literally, we, we don't really know. We actually yeah. don't know how either side made their money or didn't make. It's just there, and I also like that. It's not like there's no blame to go in terms of one's rich because of this and one's not rich because of this. So, so when we get a time, I would love to sit and watch this movie with you. Okay. We can watch this movie together. That'd be fun. Yes. Okay. So we'll move on to our next movie. We have a clip for The Irishman, so we'll take a look at that. Yes. Okay, you saw a clip for The Irishman, in which a hitman for the mob looks back on his life, including his involvement with labor organizer Jimmy Hoffa. This is, of course, Martin Scorsese's newest uh, epic, and uh, which is always a <laughs> cause to celebrate. Yes, week. I know. It's like it's just one great auteur after another. And of course, this cast. I mean, we have to mention Robert De Niro as Frank Sheeran, uh, the lead character. We have Al Pacino as Jimmy Hoffa. You have Joe Pesci as Russell Buff Buffalino. Um, Harvey Keitel as Angelo Bruno, and Anna Paquin in a in a <sighs> quiet but essential role as Peggy Sheeran, um, Robert De Niro's uh, daughter. Yeah. So this film, a lot of a lot of discussion about this, but let's just get to the nuts and bolts. It's a good film. It is a great film, and I'm giving it four stars. Oh, I, my God. Surprise. Oh, jeez. Oh, there's okay. been a lot of talk of the length of this film, and let me say oh, something about that. Yeah. Three and a half hours, for me at least, and we saw it in the theater, flew by. In fact, oh, yeah. I, I didn't even have to get up to use the restroom, and I was no. really worried about yes, it. As you we know, I was, I was yes. like, is there going to be an intermission? We even asked the people at Salem Cinema, yeah. is there going to be an intermission? There, there wasn't. Then we were worried. We had had lunch right before. I had all these worries about it. And then once the movie started, I just became so engrossed. This is a character study. This is a great film that is about mortality and life and about the process of aging and looking back at your life and wondering if you made the right choices. It's also about a man, and I'm not saying it's you know biographical in any means, but a person who chose work maybe over family and looking back at that like ends at a certain points in his life and wonders if he made <laughs> those a really interesting job he had. <laughs> yeah 
what one wonders if he made the right choices because of yeah. where he ends. There is a tracking shot yeah. at the beginning of this film that has mm -hmm. been much discussed. It kind of looks like a tracking shot that was used in Goodfellas. But instead of tracking through something exciting, you know, like a gangster's home or a casino or something like that, we're tracking through a nursing home. Because we start at the beginning of the film with an aging Robert De Niro, and then we go back, and he kind of tells his story. And then, of course, there's the use of the, you know, de-aging process much talked about which didn't bother me. You asked me if I saw the seams, and even when I did, I really didn't care because I was so invested in the characters. Yeah. I, it, 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 just a little bit for me, because I'm used to just kind of looking for it, because I watch the MC mov MCU movies, and some are really fantastic with them, some aren't necessarily. Oh, did I mention superhero movies? Sorry, Martin Scorsese. So, uh, you shouldn't use that in the same review. Yeah, whichever. But uh, So here's what we have. So it's a Martin Scorsese movie with Robert De Niro and Al Pacino and Joe Pesci. Joe Pesci, who is retired from acting, they bring him every time he's out, they pull him back in. And then Al Pacino, who gets to act. We haven't seen this in a while. I just watched the Godfather trilogy just recently, and it was just so delightful. And it wasn't like in Heat, which is a film I loved, when they finally got to see De Niro and Pacino, and it just cut back and forth, and you weren't really in the same dang darn scenes. This one, we get to see it. The two actors of their generations knocking it out left and right. And it's so amazing how De Niro just lets a, just knows how to let a scene breathe. He doesn't have to say anything. Kind of giving the look. Does it kind of lets the, and of course, Pacino will suck all the air out of the room with his volume and, and being able to do what, what he does. Just watching them back and forth mm -hmm. for three and a half hours is awesome. And but then he breaks Joe, it down too. Pacino oh, yeah. oh, doesn't no, no, just no. scream. I oh, think no, no, exactly. that's when you have a director who you who knows what he's doing behind the camera because I felt like Pacino, there was a few times when he first comes on screen, he's in front of a crowd and he's yeah. doing the Pacino thing and I thought, oh no, here we go. But when his quieter moments, when he's especially when he's interacting yeah. with the Frank Sheeran character and having these conversations because their characters are close friends, you know, and he's kind of his trusted confidant the best and they scenes, have yeah. some they have some amazing scenes together. So then you bring in Joe Pesci and I thought, oh, here we go. Then we're really going to knock this up to 11. And Super. this is the so. most subdued performance and there's a guy that we already know his you know it's kind of great because you get to take it from his, his Goodfellas performance or his casino performance you know that Pesci can play a dangerous guy and you know that he's a powerful man and he's already done this so when he speaks you listen and he speaks in very even tones he thinks about what they're going to be doing he talks to De Niro I mean it was just like you just it's the anti-Joe right Pesci in. performance you're expecting yeah it's just awesome I mean it's an it's a fantastic cast Anna Paquin's character is so so darn good and they they cast her just perfectly because she is all she does eyes. it all eyes and just the looks she gives and you know exactly what's what she's thinking she is the Fantastic. moral center of the film if yes. you will and uh and we haven't even mentioned there's also a ton of other great actors in here ray romano bobby cannavale i mean it's just it's just sort of stocked with great oh. actors throughout so i so four stars happy. for you oh, i hope oh okay. my gosh Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I so two four-star films. We know we're, we're it's right on. December. Yes, yeah, it's, yeah. it's the it's holidays for snobs. Yeah, yeah, here we go. Okay, okay. so uh, next we have our, our uh, film uh, *Knives Out*, directed by Ryan Johnson. Let's take a look at the let's take a look at the clip. Yeah. Okay, so *Knives Out* is about a detective investigating the death of a patriarch of a very eccentric and combative family. Um, this is a kind of a well, it's not a Star Wars movie for poor Ryan Johnson. Just happy him to get away from all of that and be able to make another film. Uh, this is a very stylized film. It's a very enjoyable film. It's a big time, as you put it earlier, crowd pleaser. Crowd -pleaser big time. I saw this uh, at a preview screening from the third row. Ugh, I need to see it again from a little bit in the middle, like stupid app. Anyway, uh, this gets to see Daniel Craig as the detective who's trying to solve uh, uh, the murder, uh, play, uh, the patriarch played by Christopher Plummer, and of course all of the uh, um, family members played by Chris Evans, uh, Jamie Lee Curtis, Michael Shannon, Don Johnson, and an amazing Tony Collette. Everyone is, is fine in this film. But Tony Collette well, really knows Collette. what she's doing in this movie and just takes it to the next level and she's really such a gives good herself. Actress. Just with simple she's lines. Still, she's Everyone never has few get lines. Yeah, I, but what's frustrating for me is you have this all star cast, and you don't get to see a lot of them. There's only mainly well, a lot with the end of the which scene, is very good. Yes, everyone good. gets a scene. But she really knows how to milk every single line she has, every reaction that she gets, every interaction she gets. Tony Collette is so incredible in this movie. She just, yeah. uh, it just stopped when, when she was on. When she's being interviewed towards the beginning, when he's interviewing every oh, yeah. family member about what happens, she, she uses famous. that five minutes. Yeah. Goes, yeah. Oh. They're all really great. Although I I also really love Jamie Lee Curtis because she's kind of this matriarch or yeah. of sorts. She's 
Yeah, she's just she's got the one a very who's actually made something character. of her life. She's yeah. not living off her father. Right. But you can also have a, uh, you know, great actors in very small roles like Lakeith Stanfield who I love as you know. Mm-hmm. Um, and so you just have yeah, but the the actually the main actors in this is really Daniel Craig of course as a detective and as you mentioned Anna de Armas as Marta, yeah. so who is like the crucial role in the movie. I thought this was a lot of fun. It's not a four-star film in my opinion. Yeah. I'm giving it three and a half stars. I maybe liked it a little bit more than you. Yeah. The the set design um, Oh, which I didn't want. Well, I wanted to talk more about the set design of Irishman. Okay, well, anyway, and the music, which was great. But going oh, back to yeah. this film, <laughs> which I have to review this one now, um, all the cast are really good. I was a little bit take uh, offset by Daniel Craig at first because he's supposed to be, I think, Southern. Yeah. Or maybe it's it's fake, but, of course, he's an English actor, and he's one of the few English actors who can't do a great accent, so his accent wasn't great. But then I was like, well, was it supposed to not be a great accent? And I was kind of questioning that. Because at one point, Chris Evans says to him, you're Kentucky Fried Accent, so he's kind of making fun of it, like he's not a real accent. So then I thought, oh, is he, like, a fake? Anyway, was it a put-upon? Because there's layers and layers and layers on this movie of people double-crossing and different things going on. I didn't see that many layers and layers in the double-crossing. I was just like, oh, okay. Did you know what was going to happen? No, when they put it out, I was like, yeah, sure, that's fine. I knew that was whatever they thought was going to be, you know, this is what happened. I'm like, well, no, that's not what's going to be happening. Uh, I think it's just a lot and of fun. It didn't feel like they did enough of where it was like, oh, it could have been Jamie Lee Curtis because of this and da 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 da. Or it could have been this one. They kind of hint at it a little bit, but they didn't really go far enough with it. So well, they were trying not to make it a clue game, and we don't want that movie well, where it's, it's kind like. Of, it's what you want a little bit with a whodunit. I mean, you want to make a everyone little bit, look a little but guilty, but it yeah. didn't feel like it was. It didn't feel well, like they, everyone good. had motive. Yeah. With the exception of maybe her. Actually, Jamie yeah. Lee Curtis was the only. I thought it was a lot of fun. It's a good movie for the holidays. It's yeah. one a lot of folks would like to see, yeah. I think. So and it's it nice to stars. see a director doing well with a movie that they yeah. wrote and directed. It's so. a three-star okay. film. Okay. Hey, and uh, by the way, if you are watching this on YouTube or if you are thinking about watching us on YouTube, make sure to click that subscribe button or the little bell to notify you when we know when we oh, load new episodes it, because uh, I do that and I go, oh, yeah, i got to post it now to my Facebook page. Or, hey, if you want to share, that would be sweet. Be great. Uh, our next movie is from his distinguished classics list. And this is 1940's The Letter, which stars uh, Betty Davis, the one and only. Apparently, she's her own genre. <laughs> <And> it's directed, <laughs> she by, really is. directed by the underappreciated uh, William Wyler. Uh, yeah, this is a, uh, the wife of a rubber plantation administrator, shoots a man to death, and claims it was in self defense, but a letter may prove her undoing. Um, you know, <laughs> Betty Davis, Betty Davis, Betty Davis, and pretty much Betty Davis. Uh, from the beginning of this movie, we see the murder take place. I'm like, yeah, she did it. <laughs> we, we know she did it. And um, and then she was like, it's self-defense. like, nah, she did it. <laughs> and uh, we know it's going to be in that letter. And so we already know that's going to happen. What you're going to do is just watch Betty Davis. Yeah, um, and her just amazing her machinery presence. going to work. The, here. Black and white. It's yeah. and uh, it's amazing this is the Betty shadows. Davis show. It's the Betty Davis movie. She's and you know from one it. of the great. Would you say this is one of the great openings? I don't know if you think oh, yeah. cinema history, but it was yeah. darn up there because when it it's opened, weird. she comes <laughs> out. All, Guns, bla- gun blazing, literally. With one hand, yeah. shooting this guy yeah. like she's had a gun in her hand her whole life. Yeah. And I just thought, wow, well, that's a way to start a movie, just shooting a guy on the front steps of your house in cold Chasing blood. him just down, yeah. Chasing him down. She's shooting, him, shooting him as he's running away from her on the front steps <laughs> of her house. <laughs> and she's yeah. doing it like she means it. I mean, you just think, oh, I'd never want to be in Betty Davis's way. So, yeah, this was an Oscar yeah. nominee also for Best Picture, Best Actress, Best Director, Cinematography, Editing, Score, and Supporting Actor, which then I thought, who was it? who were the guys in this movie? Yeah, there was other guys the, in the movie. There are, there are a bunch of guys in this movie, but it's the Betty Davis it's show. <laughs> it's So I enjoyed it. I yeah. definitely can recommend yeah. it. It's a lot of fun. Um, great cinema. Yeah, and William Wyler, very underappreciated filmmaker. One of those studio guys like Michael Curtiz or these guys that just churned out a lot of great movies. Made yeah. some bad ones too, but yeah. Yeah. So, yeah. okay. So we will move on to our next movie. Um, which is the Oscar-nominated foreign films segment that we're doing on the show now. Uh, we just make up segments uh, to yeah, go with things we need to review. Yeah. Uh, and this one is called Gate of Hell from 1953. And it is about a samurai who becomes obsessed with a married woman at the downfall of everyone, pretty much. Um, now, this was a film I wasn't as familiar with compared to some of the other great films. They called the 50s and 60s the golden age of Japanese cinema because they just, and we've found <sighs> it to be true. That's when awesome. we see a movie on one of our yeah. list that's a Japanese film from 1950 so whatever well we just go yeah. oh yeah let's watch that right now yeah. even sometimes we have to watch something else and I'll go well, do you want to watch that one from 1954 instead and Brian <laughs> will go yeah let's watch that instead um, because we've, we've almost never found one to be bad I mean no. they're just it's so reliable that it's scary this was a director I'm not too familiar with Kino Gasa he directed 109 movies starting in the silent era 
and I was not that familiar with them. So we probably yeah. made like 40 that were great, and we haven't seen them. But I love this film was uh, nominated for Best Costume and then won the honorary Oscar, which is how they did the foreign film back in those days. They just did an honorary yeah. Oscar for one film. And um, you can really see, for one thing, there's the fabulous set design, and, and the costumes are gorgeous. It's one of the first films ever mm. made in, Japanese, in, in Japan in color. So it was an early use of Technicolor in their films, and it's all up on the screen. And it's unveiled like a, there's a scroll at the beginning, and the whole thing's told like this fable. Um, just fantastic movie. Um, yeah. The woman who stars in it, Kesa Kayo, I think is the name of the actress. I'm probably mispronouncing that. She was in Rashomon and Yugetsu, two of the greatest films in Japanese cinema. Was she in the face of another? Yeah. I didn't write I that. Well, I wrote down Rashomon and yeah, Yugetsu, yeah, yeah. but she's great. She is absolutely fantastic. You know, I, I like this movie. Um, I just felt that the connection between the two characters, because he immediately falls in love with her, and he wants he uh, he gets uh, awarded because of this war to have any wish he wants. And he's like, I want to marry so and so, and everyone laughs because she's already married. And he's like, Yeah. So you got to make this happen. And so it's really odd, and it's kind of awkward. And she's like, I'm already married. I'm happy with this other guy. My husband, hello. And she and really so likes her husband. He, yeah, yeah, and he's very no pers- yeah, and he's very persistent about it. Um, but the look of this movie, I mean, that costume design is Fantastic. jaw-dropping. I mean, it was absolutely beautiful. I would wear any of those things. <laughs> <laughs> Didn't matter. Those were the costume design in this was just absolutely beautiful and several times we talked about it like oh my gosh look at the colors on this one look at the this you know the textures on this outfit and so if you ever show up to the show it's beautiful if you ever show up to the show in medieval japanese big, robes all know what happened yeah, be, just, that, yeah that's exactly how it's going to happen but you know it is it has some interesting themes because we noted like the beginning of the film starts there's a big battle going on and the main character morito is the name of the warrior he's a this he's i thought oh this is movie he's the hero of the movie because he yep. he fights and yeah. he he uh, he fights for the lord his lord of his area and he his brother is a turncoat who betrays him wow. and he stands by it and then he actually rescues her you know at one point and so you think this is the hero of the movie and then he starts stalking her and I thought oh <laughs> this is really changing yeah, is and then he good. becomes kind of a creep and I thought that was yeah. really interesting like yeah. someone who has these uh, heroic qualities on one hand but then that same machismo and masculinity that allowed him to be this great warrior warrior also makes him think that he deserves to just tell this woman well no you're with me now you know regardless yeah. of what you want or what your husband wants so it's very interesting and her character is also a little bit interesting because towards the end especially as we see she loves her husband but she she keeps part of herself closed off to him and i thought that was really interesting so yeah it's probably not up there it's definitely not up there with the ones you, we just mentioned rashomon yugatsu the face of another. If we're still discovering ones at that level, well, I don't want to say we won't because I'm sure there's plenty of Japanese yep. cinema out there that we haven't yet discovered. But it's still really worth seeing for sure. Do you have a little time to talk about the other ones? Just do we, do we, we, want, we, to we want to go back to the Irishman? Do you want to go back? Do you want to go back to the Irishman? Do you want to talk well, mainly more the Irishman? About that? Yeah, because yeah. I didn't get to talk about the set design. <laughs> I was more talking about the stones and the food and the water that were in Parasite. I mean, just some of the the symbolism that was used with that, especially with that rock that kept weighting him down and. Holding him down. Go ahead. Well, you were talking about the stairs in Parasite, and I was also going to mention because the God, family, the the so the poor good. family, they live in like a basement apartment, it, so they're yeah, literally li- underground. underground. Yeah, literally but underground. Not completely, so they bad can that see. It's, yeah, that it's urinated on by drunks. I mean, right. it's such a sad situation, and then he even lets the fumigation in because they get a free fumigation, and they all right. try to breathe it in. But there. they they're also, money you on see the that they are doing boxes. jobs. They're folding pizza boxes, yeah. so that's also part of the gig economy, this idea yeah. you get paid per piecemeal, yeah. very much part of the gig economy. But it's all interwoven. I guess what what I thought was masterful about it is all interwoven so so seamlessly that it doesn't feel like a message movie and this kind of hits no, you over the hook. It's, yeah, it, it's, it's still yeah. a comedy, and then it yeah. becomes a thriller slash horror film. And we should probably warn people because I think a few people I've talked to were not expecting it because they haven't seen his other films so we've seen his other films so we yeah. know you know when, when you there's watch violence in his films it's it's not violent. forgettable no no yeah, no it's, yeah it's, it's not forgettable so there is some violence in this film and you will not forget it so be prepared yeah. for that i just want to mention it's interesting that. the motives that we're going to talk about that later but, but we uh, got to talk about some of that offline because there's yeah. better i feel like both i mean the irishman it wouldn't matter what you know because this isn't a movie about plot so much as a well, character I, study whereas the parasite i love I the think. fact that like oh this is jimmy hoffa you know one thing about him i'm like yeah I know the one thing about him. I knew nothing else about him. So he's like, he was like at the Beatles and, the, and Elvis Presley. Like, was he really that popular? I didn't. I mean, everyone yeah. knew his name. Well, but and it's... some of this is also in not dependable narrator because this is being told from his character's perspective. Yeah. So I don't think a lot unnecessarily historically accurate because there's well, there's sort of like th- conspiracy theory stuff yeah. in there about the Kennedys and yeah. we don't know how much. But of that I might loved be, yeah. all of that. That's but but that's so part of the good. interweaving of this kind of mythos, right? Yeah. That this character, this guy's created for himself. That he was and this close to all there's these some, folks. There, there's some. Uh, the, 
the, the, there's some narration, of course, at the very beginning. And I thought, oh, you know, people always complain. Dave's already done that on Goodfellas. You know, just because he does it one time doesn't mean he can't ever do it again. I mean, a, a painter just wants to use blue. They can't use blue anymore. I mean, come on, give me a break. It didn't you seem can like do that. Goodfellas to It's me. only the very beginning. It's only the very beginning he has it. Then he take, kind of takes over for right. that. But yeah. it's an amazing performance by... Um, uh, De Niro and, and Pacino I just absolutely was blown away by them and, and Pesci well everyone in the movie but those two just just to see those guys they're at an age this may be it yeah so they're who's going to get nominated for an it. Oscar that's the question both both three all three will yeah that would be but Pacino would be what supporting yeah, see, that's the problem. Okay, so to quickly wrap up, Irishman and Parasite, both four stars, must see, go see them. Don't don't delay. Um, the Letter, oh, Knives Out, we both can recommend, but not as strongly. The Letter, we can recommend, and Gate of Hell, we yep. can recommend. So lots of recommendations. Go to our website at realfilmsnobs.com to check out our reviews. Of course, as Brian mentioned, or subscribe to us on YouTube. Um, you can uh, follow us on Twitter. You can like us on Facebook. You can check us out on Corvallis Access Media or Silver. Uh, on TV. As always, I'd like to thank our fantastic crew, our wonderful sponsors, my amazing co-host who has good taste to like some of the same things I do. <laughs> and as always, wish you a great day and great movies. Thank <laughs> you.